What's going on, my brother? Oh, man, I can't complain, bro. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. You know, I can't, like I said, I really can't complain. You know, just thankful for another day. All praises. That's what's up. Same here. What about yourself? I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful. Yes, when I look back all over my life, <laughs> when I think things over, I'm so glad that um, the Most High chose to have mercy on me and teach me to bless my family. We're still here. And I'm grateful for that. And like you said, I can't complain. That's right. We're here for a purpose. That's right. And some of us got some homework that's due, man. Well, uh, it's not a long, uh, drawn out piece of homework, uh, but uh, as far as 11 is concerned, here's how I put it through my, you know, I've been going over it quite a bit. And uh, if I, let me see how would I put this. If I was, when did this happen? When did this happen? If I were to go up into the church, let's say, that uh, my pastor was speaking on forgiveness, and, and I decided to uh, tell somebody. The Lord talks about how many when Peter asked him how many times am I to forgive my brother. Peter said seven, and the Lord said seven times seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, then gave the you know the description of uh, then gave the, the uh, story about the kingdom of heaven being like the uh, servant to uh, 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 had the uh, debt owed the debt. That he couldn't pay. Uh -huh. And how that servant went back out after he was forgiven by the king. He goes back out and sees one of somebody that owed him money and, you know, attacked him and then had him in prison uh, until that debt was paid. So if I, 11 other Pharisees would be that if I were to change that story, it's like the Pharisees were adding to, but if I was to change that story, and not saying that it might touch other people, but he's speaking to me individually, that if I take his word, if I take the word of Christ, and I decide to add to it, take from it, or rewrite it, put my own little twist in it, and my own personal belief, fleshly belief, I would say, my own mind, my own belief in it, taken away from him. Then that's when he's saying, ah, oh, Mike, 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 beware of 11 other Pharisees, because at that time I have added some leaven in, and all it takes is just that little bit for me to begin to twist the rest of the word. And I was, uh, I remember, uh, let me see, I was talking to, uh, <clears throat> this happened just recently, and uh, dealing with a brother. And um, he actually owes another brother who's a part of the body of Christ, mm -hmm. he owes him money. And this is the payroll situation that I do with. And um, he's got the money to pay him, but he keeps paying the guy on, uh, he keeps paying him on, uh, um, he'll pay him eight days late, because he's paying him by the, um, the job site that he's on. Okay. And in business, if I have a problem with the uh, person I have, with the contractor that I made an agreement with, and I have an employee, I tell my employee I'm gonna pay you on the 13th of the month, but yet I'll wait until the 20th, because you know, especially in construction, you run in there at a lot. But I'll wait until the 20th to pay you, then it might be 20th could turn next month, it might be the 25th, I might be seven, eight days late, because I'm waiting for the contractor, the general contractor to pay me, so I can pay you. Then that right there, uh, that 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 agreement, that I'm, that's me having a problem with the contractor. I'm supposed to dig in my reserves and pay this man who I agreed to pay him on the 13th, pay him his money on the 13th, whether I take the loss, and I got to suck that loss up. Well, the more that this brother gets away with this, the more he's actually taken away from what the Lord says in 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 the uh, 
Bible and the uh, forgiving of when you forgive uh, uh, how many times you have to, to forgive your brother. And he talks about uh, uh, um, uh, if your brother has a fault against you, what you're supposed to do first, take a brother, take, you know, one member with you. And uh, if that doesn't work, take another. If that doesn't work, then bring him before the church and let the church counsel him. If that doesn't work, then you are supposed to treat him as a Gentile or a tax collector, kind of excommunicate, have nothing to do with him until he repents of his sin. Because if he continues in that way, and I'm looking at it, is that he's actually, like it says, when Lord says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Here's the thing. Gentleman's been told about this and warned about this. But it's in his belief that it's okay for him to get away with it. Now, he may not be pushing this out to anybody else, but what he doesn't realize is within himself, he has just rewritten scripture and he abides by that. And he believes that he's doing the right thing because he's feeding himself and he's being greedy and he's actually committing a form of idolatry because he's dependent on himself and not on the Lord. The Lord already has told him how to do this. So when it comes down to the living of the Pharisees, that's where I'm at with it, you know. Uh, uh, it, it, it can reach into the entire body. Uh, it, it, it did with these folks going around. Somebody started, what was it? Uh, uh, what is a woman? <laughs> All of a sudden, somebody don't know what a woman is. I forgot the sister that got, uh, she became the uh, uh, judge in, uh, what am I trying to think, in the Supreme Court. I can't think of her name right now. But I remember when they was asking her what was a woman was, she couldn't, she, she, wouldn't say she couldn't identify what him yet she there you are you're a woman herself but she could not identify with that and uh but yet she says she's the first black woman in the supreme court so i'm like <laughs> you know <laughs> and so stuff like that that's what the love of the fair just a little bit sometimes a little bit you can get out and reach to to the rest of the people that are around you or that agree with you or that are part of your community and y'all have the exact same world view it can get to them or it can just be within yourself. And you yourself start misrepresenting the doctrine and changing it here and there simply because you believe. I, I, I guess I would say because you have an unrepentant heart. A lot of folks got a little pride, too much pride to repent. And that's what I've noticed, you know. And that's what I'm saying, like with that brother and stuff like that, you know. But that's what I get from that is uh, 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 the loving of the Pharisees. That's what I get. Just a little bit. That's all it takes. This one misdirection, one misrepresentation one rewrite remove one word and put another one and that's all it takes and next thing you know that individual may start doing it repeatedly and oh no that's not what it means here's what it means i was listening to that um, uh uh um <clears throat> somebody was talking about written and record and uh not realizing that uh to record is really to write as well, but they basically are starting and they don't realize they're starting a situation that they're going to eventually have to change some information because they disagree with what the book says. But anyway, that's what I get. Okay. And did you ask anybody, any, no, uh, you didn't ask the I pastor didn't, about it? I didn't know. No, I, I, I like my pastor, but just like you and I, and um, but you know, there's things that you I I, I kind of come from when I was really digging in. I ended up a little bit. I, I ended up in the reform kind of. I, I kind of uh, somebody introduced me to uh, reform theology, and it made a lot more sense to me than the Pentecostal because the Pentecostal I was in it was always you know just about you know you know I just called the magicianship of Jesus Christ. Not with all in this pastor isn't like this, but it's what you can, you know, sometimes you can sit something in people, just leave it alone. Yeah. And well, when he told me that day, this is when I made that decision was when I told him and I said, uh, you know, because like I said, you know, I let him know that I communicate with him stuff. And I told him about, uh, um, um, uh, what was it, uh, John 10.35. And um, when he told me that when he said, dude, he sent me and he said, dude, that's, um, what word did he use? Um, I forgot. But anyway, when he uh, 
said that and told me that and told me that it was spiritual beings in the council of God who have influence over the nations when I noted in the psalm what is it, psalm 82 and in 1035 Jesus is talking to people and when you listen to the psalms the judgment that was the psalmist was asking for to be placed on them because of their treatment of the people that's not spiritual beings doing that that's human beings that were treating people less fortunate than they you know i guess you could say they were uh, uh, discriminating really what it came down to between uh uh the have and the have nots that's what it kind of came down to mm-hmm. and um when he told me that uh his response was like dude that's oh he said he dude said dude that's confusion that's, that's something like that he said Somebody's confused. Something he said. I can't remember this minute ago. But anyway, when he said that, he told me it was spiritual beings. I'm thinking, now, wait a minute. Now, study the Bible. Sometimes you want to put yourself as though you're sitting right there. When when he told me that, um, you know, that the, 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 the acts that the people were committing, that these are some spiritual beings, and, and Jesus, like he said, is it not written in your law that you are God's? And he's talking to the rulers, like I told him. I said, I know I'm not, I'm not, I, I, like I explained to him. They're not talking about me. He's talking to the rulers. Uh, and, and that they were the ones who were uh, charged with judge, using God's law to judge the uh, 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 Israel, Israelites, the Jews. And uh, when I told him, you know, he was talking to the rulers of Pharisees, you know, I told him, I said, no, I'm not calling myself no God. I said, because I, when I look here and I stuff and I'm doing my study on things, I, I see that he's talking to the rulers. That, but And he's not calling them gods. He's just saying that the position that you hold is kind of God-like. Like today we will call the president of a company. We won't call them gods of the company. But some people actually do and worship them like that. But we just call them CEOs and president. But when he did that, that stopped me. I'm not, I'm not, I don't do that because I, I don't I, I realized we're going to have some problems and and I was just going to leave it alone. And the time will come, you know, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not asking him. Not yet. And probably never will, to be very honest with you. So I'll do it on my own. I do have a, a brother who I can't ask. He studies theology a lot. I can ask him, but I just didn't really. And uh, one reason why is because I kind of know what that means. Like I said, I'm just getting, um, I'm re- being re- reawakened, as you could say. So that's one reason why I did it. And plus, I need to study on my own before I ask somebody and get it down and really, you know, and do my own research. Uh-huh. So instead of letting somebody else do it for me, you know, because that's what it would have came down to, somebody else. So I just wanted to read it for myself, get my understanding. But yeah, I won't, I probably wouldn't not ask him because he's, he's Pentecostal. So I know where he got that. Those are spiritual beings from. And then when he told me um, it was Michael Heiser or something that he got it from. And so I listened to that to see where that guy came. And he was talking about these are spiritual beings and, and uh, sitting in the council. Of, nah, nah, nah. Because the Psalms don't describe spiritual beings there. So he's talking about uh, passing judgment on wicked rulers who are taking advantage of people less fortunate than their friends, associates, and stuff. So, yeah, I won't, I won't be asking him. I, I, if he asks me, I'll respond. I'll ask then it, but as far as voluntarily, no, nah, that's not going to happen. Because he's, he, he, he told me, he told me, because he was, because that response was, dude, you're confused or something. He was talking to me. And so I realized he probably think, oh man, I just got some false doctrine going on or something like that. But what he didn't realize is, is I just didn't finish what I, I just sent him something. I didn't tell him that, uh, and sometimes the way I write can kind of throw you off because my mind is thinking before my fingertips. And I got a bad problem with that. And so it doesn't come off the way it should. Or uh, some words it should get in there don't get in there. So, but yeah, keep a long story short, that's not going to happen. So, I'll do these research, this research and stuff on my own, and that's going to be that. And uh, if I do it, like I said, if I do it with anybody, it would be that brother I was telling about the studies of theology. Okay. Well, 
Do you know where I stand on uh, the the Pharisees uh, eleven? Uh, no, I don't. All right. Now, when you go to the Bible mm-hmm. and you type in um, resurrection, okay. Um, do you know that the resurrection that word is only in the New Testament? Uh, Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, that that I do know. Yes. Okay. The, well, let me well, let me put it like this. Let me put it like this. I'm not going to say that I do know, but here's what I'm saying. Let me put it like this. As much as I've read, I've only found it in the New Testament. However, I believe what you're saying, but I'm not going to say I know because I no no no. I'm going to sound like I don't read the old book, so I know no no. But okay. all I've read from the Old Testament, New Testament, yeah, I've only found it in the in the uh, New Testament. Yeah. So I yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, the term resurrection is only mentioned in the uh, New Testament. Um, And resurrection is going into um, raising the dead. Um, And if I was to go to my dictionary real quick, I'm going to go there real quick. I got a Bible dictionary on my phone. And I'm going to type in resurrection. And it's literally a rising again, chiefly the revival of the dead of the human race uh, or the return from the grave. All right. So resurrection is going into rising. Now, when... Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. He was talking about a teaching. Now, Mm -hmm. I'm going to go there. And that's going to be in Matthew chapter 12. Talks about it as well in Mark. And you're going to Matthew 12. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go to Matthew 16. That's the one I want. Matthew 16. And Jesus says in verse 12, um, then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. And of the Sadducees. Now the Sadducees did not believe in a resurrection. And the Pharisees did believe in a resurrection. And so that word that's that's key is doctrine. Doctrine is a teaching. So if he's saying beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees. He's telling you to beware of the teaching of the Pharisees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, I like to be spot on with the word. And yeah. Jesus. That's my, that, 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 that's my problem because I understand exactly what you're talking about. That's the problem I have the way I do, the way I explain stuff and things like that. But uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about is the teaching. And so, yeah, I understand where you're coming from with that. Let me. Yeah, he's talking about the teaching of the Pharisees. Now, there was a Pharisee um, who was the son of a Pharisee who taught about the resurrection. However, if you was to go to your Bible and you type in raise the dead, Mm. none of that is in the Old Testament. What do you mean go to the Bible and type in raise the dead? What what electronic Bible are you using? Um, I got a Bible app. I can get the same so that I can get where you're at. I I got a Bible app. I'm pretty sure. I have an Apple phone, so... If I was to send it to you, um, you would have to uh, be on an Apple phone to look at it. But what, what, what app is it though? It's called KG. It's called K 
KJVA Bible. KJVA Bible. Yeah, it has the Apocrypha as well as the Bible. You know what? I think I actually have that. KJVA. You know I do have that. I actually have that. Ah. I use that a lot. And Paul talks about raising the dead quite often, quite often. Paul talked about raising the dead more than anybody, especially in Corinthians, especially in Romans, um, especially in the book of Acts. Um, he talks about raising the dead and he talks about the resurrection more than anybody. And... In the Old Testament, God doesn't talk to us about raising the dead. Um, in the book of Psalms, it says the dead doesn't praise you. Um, that right there is very suspicious. Now, I look at the Bible like solving a murder case. That's how I look. I look for clues. I look for hints. I look for stuff that's stands out outside of the original scripture and Jesus said beware of the leaven and I know the leaven is going into yeast that's going into something raising that's going into something rising so he's telling us to beware of the teaching of the Pharisees the Pharisees taught on the resurrection and they taught wrong they taught wrong. And when when I look at the leaven, the leaven of the Pharisees, I go into the teaching that someone raised from the dead. I believe that teaching is false. I believe that teaching is the teaching of Paul. And if I was to go to the first Saul, do you know in your Bible about King Saul, the first I king, mm -hmm. the first king of Israel. Mm -hmm. All right. So you know about that guy. Now, I know about him, yes. now, if you go to first Samuel chapter 28, do you know what one of his problems was? One of his one of his biggest problems. Now, he had a lot. Of, he had a lot of issues. OK. Do you know some of his issues? King Saul, the first king of Israel. He what was, was some insecure. of his problems? Huh? He was definitely insecure. I'll tell you that much. Okay. All right. But what was his first mistake he did? Because we can his learn a lot. His first his first. His, his first mistake was he decided to become a, I guess you can call him a self, self-imposed priest. Yep. Yep. Bingo. One of his first mistakes is that he became a priest. Now think about it. He's on the battlefield. He's supposed to wait. For the sacrifice. What does he do? He takes it upon himself. Because he was afraid. To take on the office of a priest. Well he ain't supposed to be touching nothing. That has anything to do with the priest. He was supposed to wait for Samuel. To offer the sacrifice. But what does he do? His first sin, my brother, was sacrifice. Now look at the New Testament King Saul. Who teaches sacrifice in the New Testament? 
Paul does. Do you know that Paul's real name is Saul? Mm -hmm. His real name is Saul. Now, the first king Saul, his problem was sacrifice. His second mistake was, and he did a lot of mistakes, but I want to talk about them big mistakes. He takes on the office of a priest. Let's look at that. Matter of fact, brother, you are spot on. I, You know what? I am impressed. Don't be, brother. Don't I be, am I impressed. I got a long way to go. Brother, I am impressed because a lot of people do not know that was his first problem. And that's going to be in the book of Samuel. And matter of fact, let's go to that. Yeah. This man was tripping. He was tripping. Now, the problem with people is they don't know the history of Israel. They don't know about God's chosen people. I recommend everybody to study about God's chosen people. You need to learn their successes as well as their downfalls. And the children of Israel had a lot of downfalls. And yeah, they, did. they had a lot. They had a lot of downfalls. I've been, I've been looking. Don't mean to cut you off, but I said I've been looking into that all uh, week. I've been listening to uh, judges while working in the, uh, what was it, judges and the, uh, and uh, what was it? mainly judges and uh, all the stuff and I'm just sitting in a while. They really, uh, them boys just did, <laughs> oh man, they just did not care. You're talking about being foolish. My God. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. All right. So let's go to that. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 11. I'm going to read this a little bit. All right. All right. We have King James. Here we go. 1 Samuel 11. <coughs> All right. <coughs> All right. All right, let's go to this man, man. This dude, this dude was tripping. It might be, let me see. All right, so chapter 11, let me see. Okay, the one I want is going to be 1 Samuel 13. All right, there, there's so much into this thing, man. Saul is connected to sacrifice. And this is going to be 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 1. Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him 3,000 men of Israel, where of? Uh, 2,000 were with Saul in Michmash and in Mount Bethel, and a 1,000 were with Jonathan in Gibeah of Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Gibeah, and the Philistines heard of it, and Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten a garrison of the Philistines, and that Israel also had an abomination with the Philistines. And the people were called together after Saul to Gilgal. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Michmash eastward from Beth-Avon. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, 
for the people were distressed. Then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in, a, and in high places and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gili. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal. And all the people followed him trembling. So they were afraid. And he tarried seven days. He tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal. And the people were scattered from him. So Samuel was supposed to come at an appointed time and offer the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. All right, and the people are running. They're they're afraid, and Saul has to do something drastic because now the people they're leaving him. So this is what he does. And Saul said, "Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings." And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering. Behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, what, what hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal. And I have not made supplication unto the Lord. So listen to this key words. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. Dang. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord, your God, which he commanded you. For now... Would the Lord have established your kingdom upon Israel forever? But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord have sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord have commanded him to be captain over his people. Because you has not kept that which the Lord commanded you. So Saul's sin was the sin of sacrificing way too early. And I made this discovery that the sin of the New Testament Saul is the sacrifice of Jesus way too early. Now, according... I'm confused with that. That one you got to get me straight on. I'm well, confused. this is the thing, brother. According to the Quran, the Bible says that Jesus died all right, for our sins. But the Quran says Jesus didn't die. And according to the Quran, Jesus will die later. He will die later. Now, we just looked at what King Saul did. He was supposed to wait a full seven days. And he waited, but Saul didn't, I mean, Samuel didn't come yet. So what did he do? He, he, he offered the sacrifice too soon, too early. And if you pay attention to, to the New Testament, Saul, he believed that Jesus was going to come back in his lifetime. He was, a, he was one of them prophets that was in a rush. And what did he do? He sacrificed Jesus. He teaches that Jesus died for our sins. And in the Quran, it says that the people of the scripture will believe, will not believe in Jesus before his death. In other words, the Christians will not believe in Jesus until after he dies. Jesus is going to die. But the thing with Christianity, Christianity believe he died already. In Islam, we don't believe Jesus died already. Okay, so the sin of Saul of the Old Covenant of the Old Testament is that he sacrificed too soon. And my brother, 
I truly believe that's exactly what the New Testament King Saul did. The same story. This Now think about it. What tribe is the Old Testament King Saul from? Tribe of Benjamin. What tribe is the New Testament King Saul from? Tribe of Benjamin. They both from the tribe of Benjamin. All right. King Saul was the first king of Israel. Guess who is the first teacher of the New Testament? Guess who is really the father of the Christian church? And I ain't going by what I say. I'm talking about what the Bible says. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15. Because I'm not, I'm not out here to teach what I believe. I'm out here to teach what the Bible says. Right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. Let me know when you're there. I'm there. What translation you got? Uh, King James. Oh, you on point today, huh? All sure. right. Now, this is what the Bible says. All right, so... I'm going to read both translations. All right. This is what the King James says. You can read that one. No, yeah. Yeah, you, I'm going to read the NLT. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You can go ahead. Do your thing. I was just wondering because I know the last uh, week before last you did the NLT. And you know, so I just asked you, are you going to do the NLT? Yep. So, I'll do the ahead. NLT. It says, for even if you had... I'm doing both. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just remember it. Did you understand what I said? Because last the uh, week before last, you used the NLT, so I'm just confirming. Are you going to use the NLT again? Yep, so. I'm going to do both. Yep. Okay, all right. Here go to NLT. F New Living Translation. For even if you had... Hold on. Hold on. If you're going to do the NLT, go ahead. I'll just listen. All right. Wait. I I'm going to read both of them. All right. You doing the NLT first? Yeah. Now, I just said that Paul is the father of the Christian church. And I'm going to prove that to you. First Corinthians four fifteen. Gotcha. All right. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Here it is. It reads: For even if you had ten thousand others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For I became your father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. Now the King James says, For though you have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For, I, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. That word begat is going into I fathered you. That's what the word begat means. If I begat someone, that means I fathered someone. That's why the other translations, if you look at it, is going to say father. Paul is the father of the Christian church. Now, what did Jesus say about father? I know you know this. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, call no man your father. What does the Quran say about the father? Did you know about this? No. The Quran, tell, let, me, let me read it real quick. Because a lot of people do not know this. And I just learned this this year. This is some incredible news that links with G, what Jesus said with what the Quran said. All right. And this right here is key. It says, Muhammad, subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
peace be upon him, is not the father of any man among you, but he is the messenger of Allah and the last and end of the prophet. So in the Quran, God tells the prophet Muhammad, he said, you're not their supervisor. He also says, you are not their father. He, and then Jesus, he tells his disciples, call no man your father. But what do we have right here in the New Testament, in the Bible? Paul says, though you have 10,000 instructors, you don't have that many fathers. Why? He said, because I have fathered you. I have begotten you. Through Christ Jesus. That right there my friend. Is totally against what Jesus taught. Okay. We ain't even supposed to call Jesus the father. Jesus said call nobody your father. The Quran says call nobody your father. Only God is your father. Now if you look at that word begot. Did you know that in our Bible. That's only uh, something that the, we supposed to say of the most high. And I'm going to give you that scripture. And that's going to be right here. In the Old Testament. Because God is our father. And this is going to be. Right here. This is going to be. Because Moses says this, you, he said that you are, you are unmindful. He told the children of Israel they were unmindful of the Most High who begot them. This is going to be Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 18. And it reads, Of the rock that begot you. You are unmindful. So God is the one who begot us. God is the one who created us. Mm -hmm. The Bible says. Of the rock. That's the most high. That begot you. That means who fathered you. You are unmindful. And look what he says. And has forgotten the God that formed you. I don't want to be, I don't want nothing to do with that. He said, you are unmindful of me and you forgot about the real father. You forgot about the real father. God is the creator. He is the one who begot us. He is the one who fathered us. And he tells us in both books, he tells us in the gospels, Jesus, the true prophet. He said, look, call nobody your father. Don't call. He said, don't call nobody your father. Okay. And then in the Quran, it says, Muhammad is not your father. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then, and then Paul comes on the scene and says, look, I'm your daddy. Now think about it. Think about it. Who was David's daddy? Who was David's daddy? Uh, what was his name? Man, I can't think of that man's name. It saved my life right on two months up. Jesse. Yeah, but who was his his daddy? Who was his daddy daddy? Who did he go and live with? Whose daughters did he marry? Oh. Huh? Huh? You talking about Saul? Saul! Uh -oh. oh, whoa! Boy, we, we, we own to something now. So David's daddy... So he said something about Saul called him his son, father, or something in there. Yeah. David was his daddy because who did David marry? He married, uh, he gave him, because he gave him, what was it, his first daughter for, um, what was it, girl? I, don't, I can't remember her name. I don't remember her name, but I know who you're talking about. He played him twice. He played him. Now, look, remember, he was going to give him his oldest daughter. He said, I'm going to give you my daughter. I'm going to give you my daughter, Mirip. And then what did Saul do? He took her and gave her to somebody else. And then what he do? Then what he do? He yes. said, "You know what? I want to yeah. kill. I want to kill David." He said, "David said, hey, you giving me your daughter? You know, I'm a poor man. You know, I'm a poor man. 
You know, Jesus was always identified with the poor. And he said, well, if you, if he said, go tell him if he want to be the king's son-in-law, tell him to go kill a hundred Philistines and, and, and circumcise them and circumcise them. And 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 uh, then you can be my son-in-law. He brought him back to your four kids. Yeah, yeah. David brought him back two hundred. He brought him back two hundred. And what happened? He was with his daughter Michal. And then what did what what did Saul do? Saul took his daughter away. He took his wife for the second time. Saul took that church from David. He took that woman. He took that nation from David and then he gave it to Pontiel. Okay. And then after King Saul died, David was turn it was his turn to be king. And he told Abner, Ishbosheth and them, he said, Look you here. Give me back my wife that I got for two hundred Philistines from Saul. And remember, he had to give him. Michael back. But Michael, man, that woman, man, she had some things, man. Everything that was connected to Saul was just messed up. Because his daughter seen David dancing. And she got so jealous. Okay? And him dancing around those women. And that she 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 wanted to say, Oh, wasn't the king so glorious in front of his maid servants? Parading himself around dancing. And he said, Woman. I'm praising the Lord. You know, I'm praising the Lord. It was the Lord who made me king over your daddy. And then he said, and then he said, you know what? I'll get more vowed in this. Like, I, I really get naked. I really dance out of my clothes. And then the Bible says that Michael, which is a picture of the, of the Christian church. He said, she, the Bible says that she didn't bear him no children unto her death. Okay, everything that was connected to Saul, man, was messed up. Like the best thing, the best thing that came out of Saul, and it, even he had some issues, was Jonathan. Was David's best friend, Jonathan, okay? And, okay, but, but going back to where we at, you got to understand that Saul, in the New Testament, be, in the New Testament, being a father of the Christian church is seen in the Old Testament. Paul was the father of David. Could you, could you imagine that? Saul was the father of David. And that's how it is in the Christianity. That's how it is in the Christian church. Paul is really behind the scenes. He's really the father of the Christian church. Not Jesus. Jesus didn't call himself the father. Okay, he said he was one with the father, just like I'm one with the company, just like I'm one with my wife. That don't mean I'm the CEO. That don't mean me and my wife is the same. Just because I say I'm one with the father doesn't mean I am the father. You know, a lot of Christians, they'll, they'll take scriptures and they want to tell you what it means. Jesus didn't say I am my father. Jesus said I go to my father who is greater than I. He said his father is greater than him. Okay, and in Christianity, you'll see that who is the father of the Christian church? It's it's King Saul. It's the same the same thing you will see, brother. Everything that you see in the life of the Old Testament King Saul, you can see in the New Testament King Saul. Now I'm going to show you something that you probably did not know. Who did King Saul kill? Who did he use to kill? He used this man. Oh, he, he, he used David to kill. No, 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 no. I'm talking about right after David, okay, came to live with him. He started getting jealous when the women started singing, right? Okay, he started getting jealous. But what happened? When David was running from King Saul because King Saul was trying to kill him, okay, oh, just like oh, you're talking about uh, what, what's his name, David's son. No, 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 no. The Edomite. 
All right, I'm missing it. I'm missing it. I'm missing it. He used he used the Edomite by the name of Dog or Doug, D O E G. Remember, remember what King Saul did that was so wicked. King Saul was looking for David, and then what did David do? He ran to the priest. He was hungry. The priest gave him some of that 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 that, that uh special bread that only the priest is supposed to have. Okay, and he asked David if he's if his if his men's have been with women, and he said, "No, nah, we ain't been with no women." He said, "Okay, well y'all can eat this." And then he tells him, he said, "Well, he said he said I need he he didn't David had such a good heart that he didn't want to tell the priest that King Saul was trying to kill him, so he." He asked the priest for a weapon. And he said, well, the only weapon I have is the sword of Goliath. <laughs> he was like, oh, oh, let me have that sword. Ain't nothing like it. So the priest gave David the sword. But the priest did not know that David was running from King Saul. So the news got back to King Saul that he seen the priest. So King Saul, in his jealousy, you know what he does? He goes to the priest and tells the priest, you know what? You helping David. And the priest is like, what are you talking about? You know? And then he said, well, who is loyal as David? David is your friend. You know? And the man was like, you know what? King Saul was like, kill him. And everybody in Israel was like, hell no, we ain't finna kill these priests. These, these is the men of God. This is the church. This is the Old Testament church. King Saul said, kill him. And nobody would do it except for the Edomite named Dog. Or Doug. You know the symbol of the wolf is, is the dog. The, the symbol of Benjamin is the dog. Is the, woo, the, the wolf in sheep clothing. Now think about it. This man, King Saul, had 85 priests killed. He killed the church of his day. Fast forward to the New Testament, my brother. What did King Saul do? He was killing the church. He was killing, he was killing the church. I'm telling you, bro. Everything, everything that the Old Testament King Saul done. Everything he's done. You can see it in the New Testament King Saul. Now, going back to that raising of the dead. Who was the first person in the Bible to bring by bring up somebody from the dead? What's his name? Uh, that was Saul. That was Saul. Who did he bring up? Uh, Samuel. He brought up Samuel. King Saul had more faith in Samuel than he did in God. In the New Testament, King Saul had more faith in Jesus than than he did in God. The Old Testament king saw. Because of God quit talking to him. God quit coming to him in dreams. God quit speaking to him by the Urim and the Thummim. You know what king Saul did? He went from killing witches. He was the witch killer. All the witches was afraid of king Saul. Because he was killing the witches. But then what happened? God quit talking to him. What does he do? He goes and visits a witch. Then he put on his real clothes because he is the wolf in sheep clothing. He, put, he disguised himself, the Bible says. And he went to talk to the witch. And the woman was like, hold on now. King Saul is killing us. You trying to get me in trouble. King Saul, you know what King Saul, he said, King Saul said the most wickedest thing. He said, I swear to you by God that your life will be saved today. Even though the Bible says in Exodus 23 that you're not supposed to suffer a witch to live. I know it says it in Exodus somewhere. It says you are not supposed to suffer a witch to live. Let me get that real quick before I butcher it. Exodus 22. Exodus 22, 18, it says, you shall not suffer a witch to live. And, Paul, and, and King Saul promises this woman that her life would be spared. Now that right there is just blasphemy. He lets this woman live. The woman that he was supposed to kill, he let her live. She brings up the prophet Samuel. 
And Samuel's like, man, I'm paraphrasing. He said, man, what you, what you bothering me for, man? What is you bothering me for? And he said, well, God quit talking to me. God quit speaking to me by dreams and visions. And, and Samuel was one of those real prophets. Let me tell you something. Samuel, man, people don't, people don't even respect a Bible. Samuel, the Bible says not one word he ever said touched the ground. He, was, he is the only prophet in the Bible that says that the Bible says not one word he ever said touched the ground. He was a real prophet. And Samuel said, well, if God quit talking to you, what you bothering me for? He just told him the truth. He said, he said how can I help you if God has, has cut you off? I'm paraphrasing. If, if, God, it can't, if God quit talking to you, what can I do for you? See, Samuel recognized that God was God. Samuel knew his position. He knew that if you are in trouble with man, he teaches us that God can help you. But what does Samuel say in, in 1 Samuel chapter 3? He says, but if you are in trouble with God, can't nobody help you. See, the prophet Samuel was against the mediator. See, we got that mediator stuff. We got that mediator Jesus stuff in the New Testament. But no, 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 not by the real prophet. The real prophet Samuel said, looky here. If you are in trouble with God, boy, can't nobody help you. Can't nobody help you. And that's different in the New Testament. So then what happens is she brings, uh, Samuel says, looky here. He said, you know what? You about to be dead. And your sons is about to be dead. You know, you finna die. <laughs> I can't help you. And you know what? You finna die. You finna die tomorrow. He just told him the truth. He was one of those prophets that didn't prophesy false peace. He didn't give you that fake, oh, somebody finna die for your sins. No, he said, looky here, man, you finna die tomorrow. He told him the truth. And what happened was King Saul started fasting and he wasn't finna eat. But then the witch was just like, please, please eat something. Eat something. And they all begged him to eat something. And the next day he went out to battle. And him and his sons were killed. And there was a twist, twisted story. One version of the Bible says that uh, Saul fell on his sword and he died. And that's symbolic of him falling on his own word. Same thing with the New Testament King Saul. The New Testament King Saul, he fell from his own words. It was his own words. He opened his mouth and he couldn't go back. Those 13 letters came back to get him. And it's the same thing with the Old Testament king Saul. He fell on his word. All those times he was trying to kill David. It was over 27 times he tried to kill David. They all backfired. God kept David alive. And it's the same thing with Jesus. We believe in the Quran. As much as King Saul tried to kill Jesus on biblical record, it's the, the truth about it is God saved Jesus. Jesus didn't die yet. Now, going back to the New Testament, now we have kings, we have the New Testament King Saul. What is he doing? He was going around doing what? He was going around killing the Christians. He was going around killing them. Then what happened? He did the same thing his, his forefather did. He started following them he actually became the teacher of them he actually became the father of them so just like the old testament king saul went from killing witches to becoming a witch it's the same thing with the new testament king saul he went from killing the christians to becoming the father of the christians they was afraid of the old testament king saul the witches was remember she was afraid she was like are you gonna have me killed it's the same thing with the New Testament. They was afraid. It was like, what? God, uh, the prophet was like, you want me to go lay my hands on King Saul? Lord, he, he, he's, he's been killing the church. Everybody did not want to accept King Saul. I mean, New, the New Testament King Saul. They was like, uh-uh. I heard about much evil he did. Everything, my brother, that you see in the Old Testament King Saul is the same thing you see in the New Testament King Saul. Now, what's the problem is you got all these pastors, all these teachers making all this money. 
And they don't even have the truth, my brother. They don't even have the truth. They don't even understand the Old Testament. They don't understand types and shadows. They don't understand the, the first king saw. The first king saw was wicked. So you're telling me the second Saul is, is an angel? No. The first king Saul was wicked. And the second king Saul is two times more wicked than him. All right. You go to the Old Testament. There's a guy named Joseph. He was a good man. You go to the New Testament. Joseph was a good man. You go to the Old Testament. There's a guy named Joshua. He was a good man. You go to the New Testament. Jesus. He was a good man. Every person that has the same name. They have the same character. They're good men. So how are you going to go to an Old Testament King Saul and this man was wicked and then you're going to fast forward to the New Testament and this man is an angel? No. God does types and shadows. And so the leaven of the Pharisee, my brother, is the teaching that Jesus rose from the dead. That's the leaven. That's the Pharisees. That's the, the Pharisees' doctrine. That was their teaching. And Paul is the one who who taught that more than anybody. And that's why you, 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 you'll be like, dang, this brother is constantly on Paul. This brother. No, I didn't know this. I did not know any of this. It was the most high who was revealing this to me at home in my house from studying. I didn't realize how off Paul was because you got to understand. I was a Christian for 20 years. I know the letters of Paul. I know the teachings. I know some of the books by heart. Like Ephesians chapter 1, I can quote it to you. I had a lot of the stuff memorized. I've been supporting Paul this whole time. It was within the last year when I came into Islam. And then I was like, you know, the, the teachings of Paul is kind of funny. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. And then I would just slowly get, get caught up in and studying it and then one time I did this message and the Lord showed me so much and every time I study it I just see more and I see more and I see more and I see that Paul was the Antichrist Paul was the one who was against Christ Paul is the one that was against Christ's teachings Paul is the one that was against the father's teachings Paul is the one who is the false prophet that's going to be thrown in the lake of fire in the book of Revelation. Okay. All this stuff is Paul's fault. Paul is the one who is the most against God. Okay. It's his teachings. It was his teachings that has literally destroyed the whole world right now today. Millions. Christianity is the biggest religion in the world. You know who's responsible for that? Paul is. Jesus ain't. You see Christians selling everything they have and following him? You, you see the Christians giving up everything they have to the poor and following him? No. No, they following Paul. Paul has got the whole world deceived, my brother. Everything about him. If anybody wanted to bait me, and that's the reason why people ain't trying to come, I have so much stories, so much teachings on Paul that a lot of the people... And like I said, my channel is small. It ain't really out there anyway. But for the most part, people don't want to talk about Paul because I, I got a whole lot of information on him, bro. He is the wolf in sheep clothing that Paul was warning his disciples about. He told them, he said, beware of wolves and sheep clothing. OK, Paul came in and took over. He came he came in and he took that church. That's exactly what he did. And I know we, we all have um, revelation and knowledge and understanding. But the reason why I wanted you to know where I stand on it. That way, when you talk to other people, when you talk to people, you can see where they at. And you can see where their understanding is. And you, will, and you will understand that ain't nobody teaching that. Ain't nobody saying that the leaven of the Pharisees is the teachings of Paul. That's right here in the house of David, right here. And, and I'm excited and I give God all the praise. And if someone has any questions, like if you have a question, if you like, well, hold on, brother. Well, this we can deal with that. And I will show you. I will show you more. Everything you see in Saul's life is what 
is in the New Testament King Saul. Who you think has the kingdom today? When you say who you think has the kingdom, what do you mean? He took the kingdom from Israel. Matthew 21, 43. God was so fed up with the nation of Israel that he literally took the kingdom from them and he cast them out of their own land in 70 CE when the temple was destroyed by Titus Vespasian and the children of Israel ran into the northern part of Africa and some went towards the south and so the children of Israel were scattered um, due um, to their sins. They did not repent at the teachings of John the Baptist. They didn't repent from all the prophets and they didn't even repent at the teachings of Jesus. Okay, Jesus prayed for them but that didn't stop Titus Vespasian coming over there and totally destroying the temple and then kicking them out of their own land. And then the Ishmaelites took over their land. Okay, and then now you got the Israelis and all that stuff fighting and all that. But the, 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 the house of Israel was snatched from them and now Ishmael is in there. Ishmael is all over everything that, that the, the Benny Israel once had. So when the, when the Bible says that the kingdom was taken from Israel, all right, and it will be given to another nation, another ethnicity, all right, so my question is, right now today, who has the kingdom? Who has the power? What religion, now I'm giving you a clue, what religion right now has the power? What is the largest religion? There you go. There you go, answer. Do you know it? What is the largest religion in the world? I would say it would have to be between... Uh, no, this is... No. Christianity. It's Christianity. Christianity is the largest religion in the world. Okay. And remember what God told uh, told Saul. Remember, he said, "Look, he said, he said, the kingdom is going to be taken from you, Saul, and is going to be given to David." He said, "I'm gonna give it to David." Now, God wasn't. He was. He was speaking right then. He was talking about taking it from Saul and giving it to David. Right then, he was talking about taking it from Benjamin and giving it to Judah. But God is speaking deeper than that. He is talking about one day the kingdom is going to be taken from the house of Saul. And now you understand where I'm going. One day Christianity is not going to be the strongest religion no more. There's going to come a day when the house of Saul, which is the house of Christianity, and it's already getting weaker. Because it used to be the fastest growing religion. Right now, the religion of Christianity is slowly starting to diminish. Now, no doubt, it is the strongest. It is the most powerful. Right now, the, the strongest military, the strongest uh, group of people, the, the most richest everything, it's all in the hands of Paul. It is all in the hands of Saul. And what I mean by that, it is in the hands of a so-called Christian nation, America. All these, all these world powers is connected to the religion of Paul more than any other religion. Okay, so there, what I'm saying is there's going to come a day when the house of Saul, which is Christianity, is going to lose its power. And it's, and it's happening. It's happening slowly but surely. It's happening slowly but surely. According to the Hadith, the, uh, the Hadith says that Jesus will descend amongst us as a just ruler. And he will, the first thing he will destroy is the cross. Where you find the Hadith at? Huh? The Hadith, isn't that the... Um isn't that the uh, commentary? I guess I would say the commentary. Yeah, yeah, the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is is the book? It's the book, not the Quran. It's just you know in the volumes in the books. It talks about Jesus coming back as a just ruler, and he will destroy the cross. 
He will destroy. You know, think about it. Think about Samson. Remember Samson? You know, the man got his eyes put out by this woman. Um, mm -hmm. And you gotta, you gotta understand that that all that stuff is metaphor. Delilah is a picture of the Christian church, man. And this woman took his eyes out. Why? Because think about it. Jesus is seeing everybody worship him and not his father. And this woman had Samson's eyes put out. And then he feels his way on the pillars. And he, and he pushes his hands. And you got his hands extended like a cross, right? And he kills more people in his death than, his, than in his entire life. Now, the reason why God made Samson a judge was to destroy the Philistines. That was his whole purpose. His whole purpose was to destroy. And Samson put his hand on his on the left pillar and he put his hand on the right pillar like a cross, okay? And he asked God to strengthen him one last time. And he pushed with all his might and he destroyed the biggest idol he destroyed all those Philistines. He killed more people in his death than his, than his entire life. Now, I believe, notice I said I believe, I believe that is a picture of Jesus when he comes back destroying the cross. It also says he will get rid of the pigs. And we see stories in our Bible where Jesus tells the pigs to go inside of a 2,000 pigs and they go into the pool. So there's a lot of stuff. See, I, I study. When I, I man, I, I don't know, when I study stuff, I'm paying, I'm paying attention. I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, the Bible says this. Let me find something else. I'm like, oh. So what the Bible is saying, the Hadith is saying the same thing. It's saying the same thing. He will destroy the cross. He will destroy the pig. Is huh? your online, is your online yeah, ability? yeah, yeah. I can send it to you. I got all the volumes. I got all the volumes. And like I said, I, I look at it. Um, I look at all of it. I, I look at it and I study it. And it is consistent with the Old Testament. Um, a lot of the stuff is consistent with the New Testament. Like Jesus destroying pigs. He did that in the, in the New Testament. He destroyed pigs. Which is something that I always was wondered about. I'm like, well, you know, you know, and then when I read the hey deep and the hey deep literally says he will come back. The first thing he will destroy is the cross and he will get and he will destroy the pig and he will get rid of the John Z attacks. So he and, and he has an assignment when he comes back, just like Jonah. Remember, Jonah, everything you see in Jonah's life, you see in Jesus life. Remember, Jonah jumped over the board. OK, and everybody thought he was dead, but he wasn't dead. He was spit up. And then what happened? He went to go and preach. And this time he was preaching what the most high wanted him to do. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time and he caused the people to repent. And that's exactly what's going to happen. The Jew, the Bible says that the Christians, I mean, the Quran says that the Christians will not believe in Jesus until after he dies. So think about it. What made God the most famous? It was the killing of the firstborn. When God killed Pharaoh's firstborn in all of Egypt, that's what gave him the renown and gave him the fame. Everybody knows, knew who God was through the killing of the firstborn. And it's the same thing at the last day when the Most High has to close Jesus' eyes. That right there is what's going to make the Christians that are left believe in Jesus. They won't believe in him until after his death. What is that saying? The Christians don't believe in him yet. They crucified him. Paul crucified him way too early. He did the exact same thing that Saul did. Okay? He, he, he made the sacrifice way too soon. And then, do you know he did it again? God told, God gave Saul another chance. He said, look, I want you to go and I want you to kill everything of Agog. I want you to kill all them Edomites. Kill them all. Kill all the Edom." Kill them all. Kill the women. Kill the babies. He said, kill the sheep. Kill everything. Just kill them all. And you know what Saul does? Saul goes over there and he kills some of them. And then he spares the king. Okay. He, he lets the king live. King Agog. And then he started making sacrifices with the sheep. 
And then Samuel came to visit King Saul. And then King Saul was like, I did what the Lord told me to do. I did what the Lord told me to do. And, and then the prophet Samuel was like, well, then why do I hear all this bleeding of the sheep? Why I hear all these sheep? He said, kill everything. And he said, well, you know what? So you see, I, 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 I kept all the sheep. To make a sacrifice to the Most High. To make a sacrifice to the Lord our God. And then, and then Samuel says, Does the Lord have great delight and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Then he says, and I love when they say this in them old-fashioned Christian church. They say, obedience is better than sacrifice. And that's, that's exactly what Samuel said. He said, obeying God is better than a sacrifice. And in the New Testament, Paul teaches that the sacrifice is greater than obedience. But the real prophet, the real prophet Samuel, he said, no, obeying God's voice is better than sacrifice. That was Saul's problem. He was always killing something. He was always sacrificing something instead of obeying God. And God literally took the kingdom from him. He said, you know what? I'm about to give this to somebody who is better than you I'm about to give it to David and that's why he was trying to kill David the whole time he was trying to get rid of him but he couldn't okay so Saul's the the Old Testament King Saul his problem was sacrifice and it's the same thing with the New Testament King Saul his problem was sacrifice okay God's law was the son's are not supposed to pay for the father's sins. How could one man pay for everybody's sins? The Bible teaches against that. Okay, in Islam, we don't teach that. We teach repentance. God can forgive you any way he wants. He can, he can forgive you by simply having mercy on you. Like when David committed adultery with Bathsheba, God just forgave him. He didn't offer up no animals. He, he, he was supposed to be stoned to death, him and Bathsheba. But God forgave him. Didn't nobody have to hang on a cross. Same thing with Isaiah. Isaiah kissed a rock. He kissed a hot coal and his sins was taken away. God doesn't kill a human being to pay for everybody's sins. That's, that's something that the Israelites believe. That's something that the Pharisees believe. But God didn't teach that. He didn't teach us to be like that. He, he did not even allow Isaac to be sacrificed. He saved Isaac. He killed something else. He killed an animal. He didn't kill Isaac. You know, and that's in Genesis 22. So the problem with the New Testament is the teaching that Jesus rose from the dead, the teaching that Jesus is God, all that stuff, all that stuff is idolatry. And all that stuff is what angers the father. The father wants to be on top. He, he ain't never shared his glory with nobody. He ain't never said, look, you can be God. No, God is the father. He is always the one we are supposed to worship. We ain't supposed to be worshiping nothing else. We ain't supposed to be worshiping Mary. He ain't never tell us to worship Jesus. He ain't never tell us to do anything like that. All that stuff is the New Testament. All that stuff is Paul. You know what I mean? And a lot of our people, they just don't get it. They don't get it yet. They, it ain't their time for their eyes to open up yet. But when is your time? You know, the Most High will show you that he doesn't like when you put the son before him. He doesn't. Do you, do you know that's the reason why Eli's two sons were killed? Hophni and Phinez? Because he, he killed them because what did he say? He said, why are you honoring your sons above me? Now, why would God? Now, just think about that. Why would God change? If he killed Eli, his two sons, because Eli's sons was bad as hell. It's a picture of the nation of Israel. Judah and Ephraim, they was bad as hell. They was doing everything they wasn't supposed to do. They was even bringing, they was even bringing idols inside of Solomon's temple. Come on, man. They was being bad. And the sons of Eli, they was uh, eating the flesh raw. Um, the people would come and bring their sacrifices because they were the priests and they were supposed to wait till the, the, the meat fully cooked. 
See, it's always about that, pro that problem with waiting. They was rushing it. They was like, no, no, give it to me. Or, or raw. Or I'm going to put my hands on you. So they was causing the sacrifice of God to be hated. And did nobody want to come and offer sacrifices every year? And God got on Eli. He sent him prophet after prophet. And finally he said, you know what? Why are you putting your sons above me? I told you about your kids. And since you didn't put them in check, since you didn't put that Jesus stuff in check, since you want to keep on worshiping the creation, he said, I got something for you. He said, your two sons is going to be dead. And they went to battle and the two sons were killed. And the most heartbreaking news was the ark of God was captured. And when Eli heard that his two sons were killed, he didn't even bother. But when he heard that the ark of God was captured, the Bible says he was a heavy man and he leaned back and he broke his neck. He died. Okay, and then the reason why he died, you know why? Because he doing what parents do today. Parents want to put their children before the God. Parents want to put their kids before their mamas. Parents want to put their children before the fathers. Parents putting their children before the Most High. And that's exactly what Christianity is doing. Christianity is saying, Jesus is the creator. Why? Because Paul is the only one who said that. Paul, and then they want to go to John and, and, and precept it and say, oh, yeah, yeah, Jesus created all things and Jesus, uh, God created everything through Jesus. No, uh-uh. The Bible says God created everything by himself. So we have these huge lies in the Bible and it's all coming out of the New Testament. That's why I took you to Jeremiah 8.8 8 last time we talked and I showed you how God was talking about the people Writing lies in the book. He was telling them. He said these men are twisting my words. They're writing lies. Therefore I'm writing my word in vain. So you, you got to look at everything. You got to look at all the evidence on the table. And then you have to study for yourself. Then you have to say you know what God. I'm about to look at your word. And I'm about to look at what Paul is teaching. And I'm about to see who's telling the truth. Somebody twisting some stuff. Some stuff ain't right, man. It ain't. And, and like I said, I've been studying it 20 years. And I just now, it's been about a year. Just now, about a year. Everybody in my house is just amazed. They like, wow. Um, they all see the truth about Paul. It ain't me twisting them. They see it because... We've been doing Bible studies for probably about, I would say about six years straight. Like we've been reading the Bible every night for six years straight. So we read all these stories. So when I'm teaching, they are already going by what they already seen in the Bible. And then it's starting to make sense. They like, wow. They like, wow. And Nobody in my house believes Jesus died for their sins. Nobody in my house believes Jesus is God. Nobody in my house believes that Paul is teaching the truth. Um, I didn't make them. They just see it. They coming up to me with stuff. They showing me stuff. They looking, they showing me stuff in the Bible. All my kids know all the Bible stories. They know all of them. They know, they know stuff. That I wish I knew at they age. <laughs> you know, they, 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 I got one, I got one daughter, man. I'm telling you what, man. This girl, I'm telling you. She, 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 I can, I can sit up there and I can have a discussion with her and she know what I'm talking about. I can ask her something and she, for the most part, she gets, she gets answers wrong, but for the most part, brother, I would say about 90% of the time, this little girl's memory, she knows. I'd be surprised. I'd be so surprised. She the middle, she the middle child. Oh, she the middle child. And this girl, man, I can ask her something, man, and she know. I'd be like, dang. <laughs> she, 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 um, she has questions, you know. But for the most part, um, I, I'll be like, hey, 
who is the last king of such and such or who is this? And I'll be like, hold on, hold on. You don't answer. You wait. Well, I want, I want you to wait. I'm going to let give everybody else a chance. And then you answer. Because <laughs> she's going to blurt the answer out. And I'll be like, hold on, hold on. I didn't ask you. I asked her. And I have to say, hold on, wait, wait. Get <laughs> she going to blurt it out, man. <laughs> And all, the rest of them is on point too. They know a lot too. It's just man, she 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 just be on another level, man. But I I didn't took a whole lot of time, man. And I I know I talked a lot, but I definitely wanted you um, to see where I'm coming from. The stuff I'm bringing out is overwhelming, especially now. What you see in the life of King Saul, man. Everything is there. Everything is there. All right, well, I'm going to tell you something. All right. Between now and next Sunday, I'm going to do some good study. Do some good study, and Mike. What, uh, you got, uh, what's the homework? All right. I, I, there's one thing I learned, there's one thing I got from you tonight. Um, and that is, uh, Instead of using my own uh, interpreting things behind experience, use the Bible. So I got that. Yeah, yeah. Use the Bible. But, uh, when I came in, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, level of experiences, and I uh, I didn't use the Bible, so I understand it now. Yeah. I mean, I did, but as far as uh, I went outside and brought in uh, information from outside, from experience, from outside experience. So yeah. I know where you're going. I understand, I understand what you're talking about now. Yeah. The Bible is speaking, and uh, yeah, speak from the Bible. I got you with that. Yes, sir, man. You're my brother, man, and, and, uh, I'm 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 glad you called back. I, I started to get a little worried because I ain't hear from you, but I'm glad you good. Brother, if you don't hear from me, it's because I actually it was impossible. Let's put it like that. All right. <laughs> okay. But uh, but uh, next Sunday. All right. So, what is the homework that you want me to do? All right. What do you want me to look into? All right, now the homework is what we talked about last week. I want you to go back to Deuteronomy 33 and 2. Okay, hold on. Deuteronomy 33 and 2. Let me write that down. Deuteronomy 33 and 2. All right. Deuteronomy 33 and 2. I want you to find out why... God is talking about Paran. Talking about who? Paran. Spell that. P A R A N. P A R A Paran. Okay. Yeah. Right. This one ain't that hard. It ain't that hard. Just look at it. Uh, you know, definitely, definitely start in the Bible. I would say start with the Bible and start with the Bible dictionary. If you have to. If you had to go to Google, go to Google, you know. Um, I got a Vines. Uh, I believe it's the Vines. So yeah, yeah. Trying. Yeah, go to the Vines Expository Dictionary. Look at that. Look it up. Um, go to, um, you know, if you had to get online, don't look at both sides of the argument. Don't just look at something um, that supports what you believe. Uh, be yeah. open-minded. Look at it and then go back to your Bible. Make your you make your decision, you know, and then we'll talk about it next time. All right, my brother. All right, my brother, man, and um, like I said, um, if this ever gets, you know, I I know I'm not up to your speed, man. So if this ever gets, you know, to the point where it's going for you, man, let me know. Oh no, you good, man. We all right. We all right. I'm nowhere near, I'm nowhere near you. Brother, we brothers, and we this ain't no race, so right we all good. Okay. All right, all right, all right, my all brother. Right. I got this. Um, 
locked in too and I had this recorded. You just let me know what you want me to do with this whenever, okay? Just bend it, man. Do what you want to do with it. All right. Uh, 830? Yep, 830. You know, make it just like 845, 850. Nine yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be perfect. That'd be perfect. Nine o'clock. Yep. All right, my brother. Blessing to you and your family, man. And I'll get on this and I'll do it the way it's supposed to be done, as I didn't do the last. All right, my brother. The Bible. And what I speak will come through the Bible, what the Bible says, and what I learned from the Bible, and not an experience that I had or anything like that. So, all right. right. Cool. Blessings to you and your family, too, as well. All right, my brother. All right. All right. Bye.